Aston Martin has signed one of Mercedes' leading Formula One aerodynamic people as part of its aggressive recruitment drive. Hiring the world champion team's chief aerodynamicist is the latest statement of intent from the organisation owned by Lawrence Stroll, who wants to turn Aston Martin into a title-winning entry within five years. So who is the latest hire? Is it controversial that Aston Martin is now targeting a team it has a very close relationship with? And how does this support Aston Martin's grand ambitions? This year, Aston Martin has announced several major hires, some of which have already joined and some who the team is still waiting for. The latest move is a significant one. Mercedes chief aerodynamicist Eric Blandin, who will join the team at the end of 2022. The move is part of Aston Martin's major recruitment drive, but the most high profile so far have come from Red Bull Racing, including hiring Dan Fallows as technical director and Andrew Alessi as head of technical operations. This is the first significant signing from Mercedes, which is Aston Martin's engine supplier and technical partner, and that potentially represents a more controversial move, especially as Aston Martin chairman Lawrence Stroll and Mercedes boss Toto Wolff have had a close personal relationship. The sensitivity of the matter was made very clear when we revealed the story, as Aston Martin's official comment felt the need to stress the transition will be an amicable one. But Aston Martin's not assembling a team of highly talented individuals to make friends or keep the peace. It's doing it to win. Blandin was named Chief Aerodynamicist at Mercedes in 2017, having previously held the position of Principal Aerodynamicist. He was Ferrari's aero team leader prior to joining Mercedes, and before that, held the same role at Red Bull. He's understood to still be working at Mercedes for now, but will be placed on gardening leave in due course. Blandin will be free to join Aston Martin towards the end of 2022, so his arrival will come around the time Fallows joins as technical director. Fallows is Red Bull's head of aerodynamics, and his current employer has not made it easy for Aston Martin to get its hands on its new recruit. His Red Bull contract runs until 2023, and it was initially Red Bull's plan to hold him to that for its entire duration. As a result, Fallows was still working at the factory for some time, but is understood to have recently been placed on gardening leave. This is because Red Bull decided it would be best for Fallows not to be in the factory ahead of his switch. As he can only be put in the garden for a maximum of 12 months, he's expected to join Aston Martin towards the end of next year. By then, F1 will be one year into all new technical regulations and the new Aston Martin factory will only be a few months away, which is when this project will get properly serious. An awful lot will happen between now and then and we want to be the main place that keeps you up to date with all of it. So if you're enjoying this video and our insight, make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on to get everything you need to know about Aston Martin's progress and all of F1's biggest stories. Aston Martin has been steadily assembling what it hopes will be a technical super team as the year has progressed, poaching personnel from various rivals. It's all part of a plan to expand the team's current level of around 500 people to potentially as many as 800. The first was Alfa Romeo chief designer Luca Fabato, who will join Aston Martin as engineering director ahead of the 2022 season. At the same time as that recruitment, Aston Martin announced technical director Andrew Green would be promoted to chief technical officer with immediate effect. Fabato will report directly to Green with a remit covering both trackside and factory operations with a view to enhancing working processes and performance. After that came the news of Fallows' recruitment to fill the technical director role that Green's promotion has left vacant. Fallows will be responsible for overseeing the aerodynamics department, overall car design and what Aston Martin calls the short to mid-term technical strategy. Blandin will presumably slot into a senior aerodynamics role under Fallows. The third senior technical director reporting to Green is Tom McCullough, who has been with the team since joining in its Force India days ahead of the 2014 season. He will continue to be responsible for trackside engineering and performance, but under the new title of Performance Director, which Aston Martin says extends to all the performance areas within the factory, defined as aero and vehicle performance, as well as performance simulation and software. Another major hire is Andrew Alessi, who has already moved to Aston Martin to become Head of Technical Operations. 
Alessi has spent his whole F1 career at Red Bull, joining in 2009 ahead of its championship winning years and holding a management role in its aero team. Team principal Otmar Zafnauer said at the time of Alessi's appointment that these hires were all about giving the team more weight so it could punch harder, and no doubt Blandin's arrival fits the same mould. But as the technical structure has continued to take shape, one question that has unexpectedly arisen is who will actually run the team overall? Aston Martin hired ex-McLaren CEO Martin Whitmarsh to head up the new Aston Martin Performance Technologies umbrella group, which the F1 team will fall under. So that effectively makes Whitmarsh the most senior person in the organisation below Stroll and above Zafnauer presumably as a result. Ahead of the Brazilian Grand Prix, it was reported that Zafnauer could leave Aston Martin to head up midfield rival Alpine. Zafnauer has been with the team for a long time. He joined Force India in 2009 and played a key role in establishing it as F1's great underdog, before assuming the team principal position when Stroll bought the Force India assets and turned the team into Racing Point and then Aston Martin. The Alpine link was something Zafnauer strongly denied at first before his stance appeared to soften. While he did confirm that he has a long-term contract with Aston Martin, he did not emphatically rule out the possibility of a move despite stressing his commitment to his current team. It's understood that Zafnauer isn't on the brink of leaving, so if that rumour really was wide of the mark, perhaps Zafnauer's hesitance to give it a hard no was simply him knowing never to say never and recognising that it's never a bad thing to appear to be in demand. Aston Martin's ambitions are tied to its expansion in terms of personnel but also major infrastructure given its building an all new factory. The Aston project began with a host of short term moves in 2021 that gave it a heavyweight feel, a full rebrand, big new partnership deals, plenty of financial firepower and the arrival of four time world champion Sebastian Vettel. But world championship winning operations aren't built overnight and it was always going to take more time for Aston Martin's substance to match its style. Over the course of the year, there have been many announcements, all geared towards medium-term progression, including breaking ground on the build of a brand new factory, incorporating a wind tunnel within that plan, coordinating a technical structure revamp and hiring so many senior people from other teams. That's underlined Aston Martin's power by being able to recruit experienced personnel from big rivals and showed the scale of its ambition. The only problem is having to wait for the benefits. That's been complicated by the first season as Aston Martin being compromised by the floor changes introduced for this year that made its car less competitive than in 2020. It looks like Aston Martin's got off to a full start on track, having taken a backward step since the race-winning final year in its racing point identity. After all, Lawrence Stroll didn't buy an F1 team and put this much investment into it to get these results. The key question is whether Stroll is patient enough to avoid this interfering with the bigger picture. He's picked these people for a reason and needs to give them time to deliver. Even new technical regulations and a chance to step forward next year are not expected to transform the Silverstone-based team into a championship contender because its limitations go beyond the specific circumstances of its 2021 struggles. Aston Martin faces a tricky task of balancing the urgency that comes with a leader like Stroll and his investment with the realism required to handle such a long-term project. The nature of the behind-the-scenes growth means it's much more important that the team's senior personnel see the right trend away from the track than get carried away with the short-term results on it. Ultimately, Aston Martin's main statements of intent are building a new factory, targeting some of Red Bull and Mercedes' main technical people, and recruiting a guy like Whitmarsh to head up an entire new enterprise. And these aren't going to have a tangible benefit for a long time. So what do you make of how Aston Martin is targeting F1's biggest teams and its latest recruit as part of that? And how long do you think it's going to be before it starts to pay off? Let us know in the comments, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and have notifications turned on to join us again for more videos in the future.